Instagram, Facebook, and X are all looking to move to subscription-based platforms. Soon you'll be able to auto-post to TikTok, Sniper Wolf doxes Jax films, and TikTok is being sued by yet another state. It's time for our monthly rundown of social media news and trends. Like always, all resources for each article, including timestamps, will be listed in the description below. And of course, a huge shout out to my amazing video team over at Story for helping me curate, script, and bring you this up to minute news and trend recap. Let's dive into the news. X and Meta are looking into subscription models. Last month in an interview, Elon Musk alluded to the possibility of charging a small monthly payment to all users in order to combat the platform's bot issue. Now, X is actually moving to a live test of this model with a scheme that could eventually see all new users charged $1 to create an account in app. Musk stated, Starting today, we'll be testing a new program in New Zealand and the Philippines where new unverified accounts will be required to sign up for a $1 annual subscription to be able to post and interact with other posts. Within this test, existing users are not affected. So what does all this mean? New accounts will still be able to read posts. They just won't be able to post on their own or reply in app. In fact, 80% of X's users never post anything at all. So. Will this be a big deal? Now, Twitter isn't the only platform rolling out subscriptions as there have been reports that Meta has been exploring the possibility of offering an ad-free subscription tier for both Facebook and Instagram. Imagine Meta charging you $14 a month for an ad-free Instagram experience or $17 a month to cover both Facebook and Instagram. That is exactly what Meta wants to charge Europeans for monthly subscriptions if they don't agree to let the company use their digital activity to target ads. The EU's evolving data privacy regulations is putting more strain on the company's capacity to use personalization based on user activity. So Instagram is basically saying European users would have the option to either pay a fee or agree to personalized ads. Because if Instagram can't use your activity to give you targeted ads, it jeopardizes its main source of revenue. Therefore, they believe if they can't have your activity or access to your activity, you will have to pay. So I'm curious because I know what I think about it, but would you pay to have an ad free experience on Facebook or Instagram? Like, is that something that you're like, oh, finally, I don't have to see ads. Let me pay for that. Or is this something where you're like, mm, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Moving on, Utah sues TikTok. So Utah became the latest state Tuesday to file a lawsuit against TikTok, alleging the company is baiting children into addictive and unhealthy social media habits. TikTok lures children into hours of social media use, misrepresents the app safety, and deceptively portrays itself as independent of its Chinese parrot company ByteDance, Utah claims in their lawsuit. Quote, we will not stand by while these companies fail to take adequate, meaningful action to protect our children. We will prevail in holding social media companies accountable by any means necessary. Governor Spencer Cox said at a news conference announcing the lawsuit, which was filed in state court in Salt Lake City. We also have Arkansas and Indiana having filed similar lawsuits as Utah's. Public health concerns are cited in the Utah lawsuit. Research has shown that children who spend more than three hours a day on social media double their risk of poor mental health, including anxiety and depression, the lawsuit alleges. This adds to the pressure TikTok is under from the US government with over half of the states in the country banning the app from government devices with even a few trying to ban the app completely, like Montana. Now, this battle goes beyond TikTok because right now the US Supreme Court is preparing to decide whether these state attempts to regulate any social media platforms, such as Instagram, Facebook, and X, actually violates the Constitution. So some members believe online services have a well-established First Amendment right to host, curate, and share content as they see fit. The internet is a vital platform for free expression and must remain free from government censorship. So even if states are filing these lawsuits, we have to wait and see what the Supreme Court decides. Does regulating social media apps actually 
violate the Constitution. I think this is just the beginning of implementing social media laws because as AI is quickly developing, I think we're gonna start seeing more and more issues and concerns and laws rise up around social media and AI. YouTuber Sniper Wolf doxes Jack's films. One of the biggest stories this past month in the creator space has been the drama between popular YouTubers Jack Douglas, otherwise known as Jack's Films, and Aaliyah Shalesh, otherwise known as Sniper Wolf. Their ongoing feud escalated after Sniper Wolf posted a photo of her outside Jack's Films house to her 5.6 million followers on Instagram. Jack's Films describes Sniper Wolf's actions as creepy, gross, and violating. So how did things get to this point? Here's a brief recap. Sniper Wolf has been creating content on YouTube for a decade now, having pivoted from gaming to reaction videos, now known for reacting to TikTok clips. While Jax Films is known for comedy and parody videos, he has recently been highly critical of lazy reaction videos, accusing Sniper Wolf herself of creating low effort content by stealing ideas from TikTok creators without proper credit or acknowledgement. Jax Films has made several videos on his YouTube channel where he's calling out Sniper Wolf, even going as far to create an entire parody of Sniper Wolf's YouTube channel titled Jax Films, featuring 64 videos in which he's reacting to Sniper Wolf's reaction videos, but in her style and making some other critiques as well. So this leads to mid-October where on Instagram, Sniper Wolf wrote, should I go visit Jax Films? He lives five miles away from my shoot. She then posted a photo showing the outside of Jax's house, writing on Instagram, let's talk like adults. Sniper Wolf quickly deleted the Instagram post after some backlash started to come in, where Jack then accused her of doxing him. Sniper took objection to the accusation, writing on Instagram, I have no idea how to dox. He literally posted his address on Google and said I threatened him and doxed him. So what is doxing and is it illegal? Doxing in general refers to the act of publishing identifying information about a third party online without the victim's permission. Is it illegal? It depends. California does have an anti-doxing law making it illegal if done with malicious intent and the incident did take place in Los Angeles. But th there's more that goes into it. So if you want to deep dive on all the legalities of this situation, then I definitely recommend watching this video from Legal Eagle. He explains everything so incredibly well. So definitely give that a deep dive if you want more explanations on the legalities of everything. So what was the result of everything? What happened? After the incident, Jax Films has called on YouTube to take action, posting a video titled, Sniper Wolf came to our home last night. It's time for YouTube to step in. So YouTube, please do the right thing and get her off the platform. Anyone who weaponizes their fan base like she did does not deserve a space here. The video has since accumulated more than 3.7 million views. And how did YouTube respond? On October 23rd, YouTube issued a statement saying, Confirming Sniper Wolf has received a temporary monetization suspension per creator responsibility policies. Off-platform actions that put others' personal safety at risk, harm our community, and the behavior on both sides isn't what we want on YouTube. Hoping everyone helps move this convo to a better place. A lot of people still aren't happy with that statement, but for now it seems like the feud is over, or at least de-escalated. But for now, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Moving on to trending memes and music from October. Besides the usual spooky Halloween songs that trend every October, the biggest song on TikTok last month was Mitski's My Love, Mine All Mine, which is currently at number two on TikTok's viral 50 list. Mitski is a Japanese American singer, songwriter, and musician. Her latest album, the Land is Inhospitable and So Are We was released last month. The single My Love, Mine All Mine has exploded on TikTok with over 1.2 million uses in just over a month. I think the reason being is that it's like the perfect fall vibe song. So if you are creating cozy fall content moving forward for the rest of the year for November, definitely recommend using this song as it's trending. Next we have It Girl, specifically the sped up version from Aaliyah. This song is currently at number three on the viral top 50 music chart and it's kind of catchy, not gonna lie. I feel like this whole year has been like, oh, I'm in my 
it girl era. I'm in my lazy girl era. I feel like that has a lot to do why this song blew up. For top albums, we have Drake's album, For All the Dogs, which dropped in October and features artists like J. Cole, SZA, 21 Savage, and Yeet to name a few. And of course, Miss Taylor Swift released her 1989 Taylor's version album with a few songs from The Vault, capturing plenty of attention from the Swifties. Now for memes, we had the dancing skeleton. If you did not see this on your For You page, who are you? Did you even go on TikTok last month? Basically, we have this filter of a skeleton dancing to kiss from Prince, and people were just filming the skeleton around their house because sometimes he would show up really, really big, sometimes really small. Some users even showing the skeleton giving them a lap dance or like the perspective of them, of the skeleton giving them a lap dance. It was pretty funny, pretty entertaining grand time. And of course, a more recent meme that came to trending towards the end of October and probably will continue to trend through November is who's that wonderful girl. This meme is a scene or like a snippet from the show Nanalan, a Canadian children's television series created by Jamie Shannon and Jason Hopley. This specific cut was from season two, episode nine that published back in 2003. It has the character singing and dancing and saying like, who's that wonderful girl? And people are doing captions that are like me after telling my husband I was gonna take a nap for 30 minutes and ended up falling asleep for three hours. People are just getting really creative with the captions and it's fun, it's a fun one. Now, if you're somebody who wants to stay up to date on trending memes and music, definitely subscribe to Stories Trend Report. They send out weekly updates to content creators so that you can stay ahead of the content creator curve and create content that could potentially pop off. As for platform specific updates and news, we're gonna start with Meta slash Instagram. Instagram adds polls in the comment streams on feed posts and reels. Instagram's adding another engagement option with polls now in the comments section currently being tested by selected users. As of right now, you can run polls on stories and DMs like broadcast channels, but with the new update, this will enable users to add interactive polls within their comment section on both feed posts and reels. Instagram's been testing this option over the past few months with various early iterations spotted in testing by some users. Polls have proven to be a popular option in other forums and apps with simple lightweight interaction, making it easier for users being able to contribute their thoughts and engage with the user's content. This is yet another random feature that Instagram has added that I don't think anybody asked for. <laughs> ah, moving on. Instagram tests a dedicated content feed from Meta verified accounts. Meta is moving to the next stage of its paid verification testing with a new experiment that will see some Instagram users able to filter their main and reels feeds to posts only from Meta Verified users. Meta has clarified that the Meta Verified feed will include posts from paying Meta Verified profiles and legacy verified accounts. I feel like Meta is so close to being onto something here, like so close. I've always wanted filter option. Even when going to somebody's profile, like if somebody goes to my profile, if they were able to filter my posts, by like oldest to newest, most popular, kind of like YouTube. So I feel like they're really close dabbing into this filter option, but I'm worried that this update specifically will cause an uproar of people saying like, oh, it's the whole pay to play thing. If you pay to be meta verified, more people are gonna see your posts because now they're adding this tab where it's only meta verified posts. So they're so close to being onto something. I don't know if this is it. I don't know, what do you think? As for TikTok updates, do you want to upload even longer videos to TikTok? Soon, that could be an option. The formerly short form video app has been experimenting with 10 minute video limit for a while, but now they will be extending that limit to a new 15 minute upload option. TikTok's original time limit per clip was 15 seconds before it was extended to 60 seconds and then three minutes, then five minutes, and then 10 minutes in 2022. Soon that'll rise to 15 minutes per clip. We also know that Douyin, the Chinese version of the app, expanded its upload limit to 30 minutes per clip last year. So could this mean that we will also be seeing a 30 minute upload limit on TikTok sometime in the future? I think the question remains as to whether users actually want to watch long form videos on app, or even if creators want to post 
long form content there. I'm not sure how fast adapting this will be because honestly, I still see a ton of creators doing part one, part two type videos that aren't even 10 minutes long. So I don't even know if creators want to post long form videos there. I see a lot of TikTok creators loving YouTube as their long form creator platform. And then they stick to TikTok with short form content. Again, pass the question off to you. What do you think? TikTok update number two, TikTok adds more direct publishing options to its API to facilitate third party posting. This is one I'm actually really excited about because TikTok's looking to make it easier to post directly to the app via third party platforms with a new direct post element within the TikTok API, which will enable creator tools to build in TikTok posting as a publishing option. As explained by TikTok, Direct post allows our community to post video content directly from third party platforms to TikTok with photo content coming soon. Creators can also schedule long form video content using direct post through social media management platforms. So soon you'll see a broader range of TikTok scheduling options added to more third party social media managing apps, while a range of video editing tools will also now gain TikTok as a direct sharing option, streamlining the posting and content management process even more. Quote, to use direct post, creators need to connect their TikTok account to the third party platform. From there, partners are vetted through an audit process before granting them access to content posting API. Once these steps are taken, the third party platform has permission to post on their TikTok account whenever the creator tries to export media to TikTok. Initial launch partners include Adobe, Premiere Pro and Express, CapCut, DaVinci Resolve, Social Pilot, and Twitch. TikTok is the platform that I get the most questions about from my students when it comes to auto posting, because right now there aren't really any third party scheduling tools that have access to the TikTok's API for auto posting. So I have a lot of content creators that like want to repurpose their content from Instagram to TikTok and they aren't able to auto post and schedule. It's a thing that a lot of creators have been asking for for quite some time. So I do think it's about time that TikTok releases their API so that creators can have easier access to post consistently to their platform. As for YouTube, YouTube pushes out new analytics tools. YouTube has announced some new analytics updates, including insights into why subscribers cancel their channel subscription, which could assist you in your future planning. In addition to this, YouTube's also providing more specific insight into how new and returning viewers engage with your content in isolation, another helpful driver for your planning. First off on new and returning viewers, YouTube has added a new element in studio analytics, which will provide separate measures for each viewer cohort, which will help you understand what new viewers are watching as explained by YouTube. Before the launch of this new feature, creators could only see how many new or returning viewers they had or how many views they got from all viewers. But now creators will have the ability to see how different audience segments watch their content. This means that creators can now see how many views they got from new viewers and compare it to number of views from returning viewers. All of this could be helpful in content planning as you look to expand your audience by knowing how many new viewers are coming to each of your videos. You can better plan based off of what these visitors are interested in. Now, YouTube also added a new and returning viewers tab, which will provide creators with a dedicated space to analyze the performance on their content based on these audience segments. The expanded data sorting options will provide more context as to what's driving views within each segment, which will give you more planning context and could be a key guide in your planning process. Next update for YouTube, YouTube expands access to monetization. YouTube is expanding access to its partner program, enabling more people in more regions to qualify for monetization of their YouTube clips. First off, YouTube recently reduced the entry thresholds for its YouTube partner program, enabling creators with 500 subscribers to be monetized, which is down from 1000 previously. Initially, the lower entry thresholds were only available to creators in select regions, but now creators in 23 more countries will have the opportunity to monetize at lower entry rates. That'll help YouTube boost its appeal to creators in many more markets. And with every other app out there now trying to sweeten the deal for their creative talent, 
I feel like this could give YouTube a key leg up on the competition. With all of that said, what news are you most excited about hearing from today's episode? What are your thoughts on some of these things we talked about? Drop them down in the comments and remember, let's keep the conversations respectful because everybody's entitled to their own opinions. Remember to sign up for Story's trend report in the description down below if you want weekly trend updates like this. All right, everybody, I'll see you in the next one. Follow your joy, bye.